I'm delighted to be joined here today with Dr. George Nieva, medical oncologist and researcher at the University of Southern California's Norris Comprehensive Cancer Center. And, and Dr. Nieva specializes in lung and head and neck cancers. And George, I, I'm familiar that you and some colleagues from the University of Southern California were involved in some research that was part of then Vice President Biden's cancer moonshot. Tell us a little bit about what, what's happening with that. Well, Rod, thanks very much for asking. The Cancer Moonshot uh, under Vice President Biden was a wonderful initiative that really aimed at doubling the rate of cancer research. So we wanted to make sure that people with all kinds of expertise were working on cancer research. We participated in a project that involved not just doctors and oncologists, but also involved engineers, computer scientists, physicists, experts in human-centered design, to really try to understand the problem of better evaluating the patient. So we put together a team uh, and created this project called Adam HP. Mm -hmm. And Adam HP was about evaluating human performance. This was uh, a way of understanding who is really too tired to get that next round of chemotherapy. And we had some interesting findings. We showed that people who aren't as active and, and you can get this now from a, an Apple Watch or any kind of wearable device, and that's in fact what we used. But we also used some other tools, such as video gaming technologies. Mm -hmm. We used a Microsoft Connect uh, a video game platform to look at how patients move when they're in the clinic. Mm -hmm. And using these tools, we can predict in an instant and at a glance whether someone's more likely to have a complication from treatment or less likely to have a complication from treatment. That's very, very interesting. Our discussion about the state of cancer treatment and research is encouraging, and, and it's uh, great to hear the so many strides we've been making uh, with treating cancer, but cancer is still kind of a difficult diagnosis, and there are significant resources dedicated to continued research for better cures. What is it about cancer that makes it so difficult to research and treat? Well, Rod, I think there's a lot of uh, challenges in cancer uh, research. I think the biggest challenge is the recognition that cancer is not just one disease. Mm. And so it's not enough to say that I'm researching cancer. It's not enough to say that you're researching lung cancer. It's not enough to say that you're researching EGFR-associated lung cancer because we're finding that there are subtypes of EGFR-associated lung cancer. And those different subtypes all deserve unique treatment. I can tell you, I have this one uh, patient came to my office and her cancer was getting worse. And then I, I looked at her molecular profile and I said, well, we have to change treatment, but good news, last week a new drug was approved for your particular genetic alteration. So while you would have had to get some difficult chemotherapy last week, this week, you just have to take a pill. Wow. And, and it works. Wow. I'm sure you get this question a lot, but outside of uh, the cancer moonshot, you're still involved with a lot of clinical cancer research, and so how close are we to a cure? Well, you know, Rod, we're curing cancer for a lot of our patients, and I used to not be able to say that. Um, it used to be that when I first met a lung cancer patient who had advanced disease, whose disease was in stage four, I would tell them that there really wasn't any chance of curing this because I'm, I'm very honest and direct with people. Right. But the great thing is, Rod, I don't have to say that to people anymore. I can now tell people, no, there's a chance that you're going to have a long-term remission. You know, the Nobel Prize was awarded for cancer immunotherapy back in 2018. And now we're seeing patients with advanced lung cancer spread all over their body. And we're seeing between 20 and 40 percent of them going into long-term remissions. Wow. We now have lung cancer patients who can develop remissions that last many years without even using chemotherapy. Wow. Just taking a, a pill once a day. Some of our patients who are getting immunotherapy only have to come every six weeks uh, to get a one hour infusion and that's all they're being treated with. And now we've even launched a, a new study where we're gonna be able to give some patients immune therapy at home without even having to come in at all. Wow. So we, we've really made a lot of advances. Now, are we curing everybody? No, we're not curing everybody, and I really wish we could. Well said, and um, I am very grateful 
that we have Dr. George Nava available to us, and it's uh, it's really a pleasure to spend time with you, and I'm very grateful for the time that you've spent with us, and uh, thank you. Thank you, Rod. It's always a pleasure to chat, and if there's uh, anything people need, uh, please let me know. I know that's who you are, George, mm -hmm. <laughs> at, your, at, your, at your nature.